proc open. And remember, proc open is the PHP function which is used in that script which started this whole thing. That script, that, you know, that I put on my desktop and said I'm going to figure out what this script, how it works at the beginning of this playlist. Okay, anyways, proc open. Execute a command and open file pointers for input, output. By looking at the syntax of this command, you can see that it's similar to popen, but it has more parameters than popen. So proc open is similar to popen, but provides a much greater degree of control over the program execution. So far, I looked at the rest of the parameters and they don't make a whole lot of sense to me. So hopefully, when I read the description here for these parameters, it'll start to make sense, especially that now I know how popen works, because I covered that in the last video. CMD, the command to execute. Okay, that's fair enough. That's exactly like popen. What's next? Down below on this page, there's a note, and I think I should present this note right now. It says, if you only need a unidirectional, one-way process pipe, use popen instead, as it is much easier to use. Just as a refresher, here is popen. Popen takes the command, the mode, and returns a resource. Proc open. Notice that proc open is spelled almost like p open. Let, let me hit that back button. p open. Proc open. Okay. Proc open executes a command and open file. It should be and opens file pointers for input output. The difference between p open and proc open, they both execute a, a command. But this one says, and open file pointers for both. Okay, the difference is for both input and output. Okay, it provides, uh, from what I understand so far, pipes in several different areas, like whether it's standard in and standard out and standard error and all those things. Okay, let me just go to popen, opens process file pointer. Okay, and this one executes a command and open file pointer to. Okay, all right, and I think I covered this part. And I said that the parameters were kind of complicated. And with p open, the most telling line here for return values, it says, when the mode is R, the returned file pointer equals to standard out of the command. The command is the command that you're running with p open. When the mode is W, the returned file pointer equals to the standard in of the command. Okay, so that's what these two PHP functions, popen and proc open, are for. They basically tie two processes together. They allow the process of the script, in other words, your script, and the other process that is involved, which is the, the command that you are running. It finds different ways to bind them to each other so they can communicate, either reading or writing. And there are certain assignments on both ends of this pipe which need to be made. Okay, so looking at the syntax, we got an idea what the resource is. And more on that, like down here for return value. It says returns a resource representing the process, which should be freed using proc close when you are finished with it. On failure returns false. So that's the return value. So returns a resource representing the process. I guess we can use that resource the way file resources are used for reading and writing from something. All right, now back up here. Okay, so there's a resource returned, and the first parameter is the command or the program that you want to run. So the second argument is this descriptor spec, an indexed array. And let me show you what it looks like, like this. Here's the indices, and here's each element. So it's an indexed array where the key represents the descriptor number and the value represents how PHP will pass that descriptor to the child process. Zero is standard in, one is standard out, and two is standard error. Okay? So think of this as like um, an, an encryption method or these are instructions, okay? So you're gonna have three indices to this array. 0, 1, and 2. Okay, I finally figured it out. What this arrangement specifies 
is that the child process will use the zero, what is it called? Descriptor number for reading. And that reading will occur via a pipe as opposed to via a file located at a certain path. The number one descriptor, again, these are descriptor numbers. The number one descriptor will be for the child process will be for writing. In other words, the child will use the number one descriptor for its output, for writing. Okay? And that writing will occur via a pipe, not via a file. The number two descriptor for the child process will be, I believe, for writing. I'm not sure what the A stands for. But this writing will occur via a file, not via a pipe. Okay? So that's how this would work. Now I need to go up here and try to understand what they're trying to say. This is to be continued in part 12.